In the headlines, Idris Wasa declares for speakership as Buttar says G7 coalition will determine next speaker. 125 more Nigerians arrive at Abuja as number of Sudan evacuees hits 2,371. Sudan crisis forces local Nigerian airlines to increase heart first by $250. Another four in seeing 24 people dead and 12 injured in Zambia bus accident. Hello and welcome to Trust TV News Update. I am Nten Ekman. Thank you again for joining us and on the news in full. The Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives has urged the ruling All Progressives Congress to respect the party's constitution and retrace eight steps from the earlier nomination of an anointed candidate for the speakership position in the 10th House of Representatives. The Deputy Speaker, who is also in the contest for the speakership of the House, made this known during his official declaration for the position in Abuja. Meanwhile, other aggrieved aspirants who are against the party's decision say if the APC ignores the call, then they will have to mobilize and support one among them. I want to believe that the principle of fairness, equity, and justice as anchored in the Constitution of Federal Nigeria, Section 14, 4, and 3, which states in the area that the composition of government of Nigeria of the Federation of Nigeria, or any of its agencies shall be carried out in such a manner as to reflect the federal character of Nigeria. Therefore, I ensure that there should no predominance of passes from the future or other as in that government or any of its agencies. This provision is meant to anchor unity, peace, and prosperity. And I want to believe that our party and our leadership will respect this provision of the constitution and do the needful. A consensus candidate can be picked, but if we sit all of us as aspirants and we decided and said this is the person we picked to lead us in the house, and I assure all of you here that we are not going to have any issue. I assure you, seeing all of us here, we are going to agree. We are going to agree to support one of us as speaker. A group known as the Odua Frontiers has strongly condemned any attempt to undermine the independence on, and the autonomy of the National Assembly in a press release issued by its National President Kolawali at ADG. The group said it is worried that there is a calculated effort to frustrate the incoming president, Bola Tinubu, and his administration before they even take office. According to the national president, they had observed a disturbing twist in the leadership tassel for the National Assembly, which they perceive as a part of a larger plot to paint a negative picture of the president-elect Tinubu and the Yoruba nation. They argue that the scheme is a response to the emergence of a certain Western presidency and is aimed at sowing distrust and suspicion within the incoming administration. The statement also highlighted the democratic principles and commitment to fair play exhibited by the president-elect, citing numerous instances where he prioritized democratic processes even at the expense of his personal interest. They however joined the Southern Governors Forum and others in calling on the APC's National Working Committee to reverse the proposed zoning of National Assembly leadership positions, arguing that such a move infringes on the constitutionally granted legislative independence and autonomy. The federal government has so far evacuated 2,371 Nigerians stranded in the war torn Sudan. Director of Special Duties, National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, or Nimo Depa Badele, gave the figure in Abuja on Saturday when 125 stranded Nigerians arrived at the Inamdi Azikiwe International Airport. The batch is the 15th set of Nigerians. The federal government has airlifted back to the country. They were airlifted from Port Sudan. Bandele, who welcomed the returnees on behalf of the federal government, said there were no more stranded Nigerian women and children. 
in Sudan. He said arrangements were already made to airlift the remaining Nigerians stranded in Sudan who are mainly male, adding that another batch of evacuees will arrive later on Saturday. The chairman of the National Hajj says the four local airlines scheduled to airlift Nigerian pilgrims for the 2023 Hajj exercise have requested for the Hajj fare to be increased by $250 due to the crisis in Sudan that will require a longer travel hour to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Recall that the local pilgrims had refused to sign the airlift agreement with Nakon due to the additional financial cost using another route will bring. The airlines include Airpeace, Asman, Max Air and Aerocontractors. Speaking during a training exercise organized for staff of Nakon, State Pilgrims Board and private tour operators, Hassan said the Commission is yet to make a final decision on effecting the request. He assured that pilgrims will not be asked to pay the money and added that the Commission has slated May 25 for the first airlift of pilgrim out of the country. Now, following the continuous detention of the Gunza Select, retired Air Commodore Ishaku Komo, women of the Siawa ethnic group from Boguro and Tafa Balewa local governors of Bochi State have staged another protest in their hundreds. The protesters say the action is to show loyalty to the detained monarch and demand for his immediate release. Adamu Imam has that report. The Sayawa protest is holding for the fifth time since the monarch's arrest and subsequent detention went public. The Bauchi State Police Command arrested Kumo and six others in connection with the recent communal crisis in some community of Bogoro town after the coronation of a hamlet head in the area. The police command had few days ago issued a press statement signed by its public relations officer Ahmed Wakil saying that the monarch and six others have been investigated in connection with the crisis. But the protesters remain adamant, insisting that their monarch must be released from police custody. Organizers is the youth, the, the, the youth and our mothers popularly, popularly known as Goodyear, as you can see them here. Is it here that the issue of agitations or chief tension issues started. Yes, so we want the Bauchi state in short to effect his release for peace to run because we know this thing is political. Member of the women group echoed their demand for the release of the monarch, a demand she said necessitated the protest. What, what is happening here has happened in many states before, even in Bauchi state. It happened, and many people. Were killed, but nobody was arrested. Why are they coming to arrest our people in Tafa Balewa and Bogoro? When they're looking for our votes during elections, they will come to us and say things like, We are theirs, they have no other people but us. Because of that, we came out in our numbers, fought all oppositions, and voted them during the last elections. But see how they are repaying us. See our women, don't give up. We will prepare and storm Bauchi life and direct. According to them, say our kinsmen have spoken with one voice by selecting their ruler who has been awaiting confirmation by the state government for over a decade. Adam Imam, Trust TV News, Bauchi. Many were feared injured and several houses raised in Tarab State as parties clashed over chieftaincy tussle in Karim Lamido local government area of that state. Now, Karim Joe ethnic group were said to have protested against the appointment of a new monarch in the town who is in who is an Hurukum man. The youth it was father guard that protested the arrival of the new monarch from Jalingo, where he and nine other newly appointed monarchs were presented with staff of office by Governor Darius Ishaku. The protest, it was lent, turned bloody as several people were said to be injured while houses, including shops, were raised down. The new monarch succeeded his late father, who died some months ago and had ruled the chiefdom for over 40 years in the same Karim Lamido town, which the Karimjo ethnic group are claiming ownership of. Lee spokesman Usman Abdullahi and the acting director of Army Public Relations, Lefnan Ooni, confirmed the deployment of police and soldiers to the area to control the situation. 
The chief of army staff, Lieutenant General Farouk Yahaya, says the army will utilize the 6,251 newly recruited soldiers to contain the spate of insecurity in the nation. He said the country faced with numerous security challenges occasioned by the activities of Boko Haram and ISWAP terrorists, armed bandit kidnappers, separatist agitators, religious extremists and other criminal elements. Lieutenant General Yahaya said, considering the numerous security challenges bedeviling the nation, the drive for increased recruitment has become imperative, stressing that it will aid in surmounting the current security challenges orchestrated by non-state actors, resulting in the wanton destruction of lives and properties across the country. He assured that the Nigerian army, with the support of the federal government, will continue to do everything possible to surmount the various security challenges confronting the country until Nigeria becomes safe for all. Now, small-scale businesses and households in Adamawa have decried the epileptive power supply that has led to the collapse of their businesses. They also lamented the low voltage and exorbitant bills, among other electricity supply related challenges, which they said have made life difficult for them. Salis Lawan has that report. Recently, electricity supply has not been steady in Adamawa and consumers across the 21 local government areas of the state are worried. While lamenting the development, they identified lack of proper maintenance, poor power supply, low voltage, and exorbitant bills, among others, as there are major problems with the distributing company. My meter enter, my meter enter temper code. Over a month now, I went to customer care in Yola. I left my complaint. They told me that they are forward with complaints of Jimita. Each time I go to Jimita, this time I go to Yola, I ask how far. They will not tell me that up to now that they have not given them the same back home number. It's witnessed again with uncommensurate increase in the tariff. Imagine a household with a bill of 40,000. How much is minimum wage in Nigeria? How much is minimum wage? Do they mean that it's only power you are going to be paying for? How about you are the school fees for your children? Feeding your family, hospital fees. We pay bills, we uh, buy units. I don't think it's too much. Even from uh, a service provider, a text message can go to the customer. Sorry, customer, for this and these reasons. We get it from our banks, we get it from our internet service providers. So I don't know some of these companies will check the turnover they get for more. Very low. When contacted over the development, the Yola Electricity Distribution Company confirmed the challenges and assured the result been them. The company, however, blamed the generation company for the issues with power supply. I am very confident that uh, with the team that we have and the ones and the partners that we have, we will be able to surmount a lot of the challenges that we have. Uh, we recognize that. The electricity business in Nigeria has very special challenges, which nobody will come to solve these challenges for us but us here in Nigeria. So we, the staff of YEDC, we are just like you, we are consumers just like you, and most of the people that work for YEDC are your children, your uncles, your brothers, and your sisters. System problem from transmission is power beyond, is a problem beyond the control of uh, YEDC. Uh, we had, uh, you know, some issues with respect to both generation and transmission, and it affected YEDC. YEDC is expected to have informed you. Again, this is part of the issue of information. They are supposed to have given you some kind of notification, information about the situation of things, so that. At least while the, the situation is being resolved, you are in full uh, compliance. While consumers are hopeful that the issues will be resolved, stakeholders said power consumers have a right to be properly informed and educated on the services they are offered as well as the charges they are in. Silas Lowen, Trust TV News, Yola. You're watching News Update on Trust Television. Coming up after the break.
We'll take a look at the favorite meal in Dora Emirate. For that and more, please don't go away. TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching News Update on Trust Television. A recap of our top stories. Idris Wase declares for Speaker Shebas, but Harris's G7 coalition will determine next leader. And more, another 125 more Nigerians arrive in Abuja as Sudan evacuees hit 2,371. Moving to other stories now, internally displaced women in Maiduguri have called on world leaders and governments to tackle malnutrition among children in the northeast region of Nigeria. The World Food Programme had revealed that over 2 million children are malnourished in the northeast, while 700,000 children are acutely malnourished in the region. Beatrice Kurutsi was at one of the health facilities that recorded high cases of children suffering from malnutrition in our reports. This is the only clinic in Muna IDP camp where displaced persons access healthcare services. Many women are here with their children for medical examination to see if they are malnourished. The facility since the beginning of the year has recorded 703 cases of malnourishment and is still counting. Yagana Bakura said she is not surprised her child has the symptoms because the camp has not been provided with food and other needs for a long time. We have been coming here for treatment for two days now. They gave us supplements and they told us our children are hungry, which is why they are sick. We can't go back to our communities because it's not safe. We need food for our children. Back then, they provide us with relief materials, but they have stopped since the time all IDP camps were closed. Our children are suffering from this malnutrition. We need help, please. It is reported that there are 2 million children suffering from malnutrition and 700 acutely malnourished in the northeast region of Nigeria. In one of the medical facilities where critical cases are being handled, a medical practitioner says global attention and humanitarian support are needed to mitigate the minions. January to end of April, we used to see uh, patients at the admission rate of uh, 6 to 8 uh, per day. But now, uh, this year, we are seeing about uh, 30 uh, per day. So that indicates that uh, this is almost uh, three times more than what we used to see previously. So this shows that uh, the trend is increasing and uh, it's really alarming that uh, more cases, we expect, we expect to see more cases. So our facility is a 120 bed capacity. We have 120 bed for the malnutrition, for the malnourished kids. 
And uh, as I'm talking to you now, uh, the 100 bet is now almost at 100 uh, percent bet, uh, bet occupancy rate. And uh, that means that shows that uh, more patients are coming and we are treating them. The minutes of malnutrition in Borno State is connected to the insurgency which has caused food crisis and denied farmers access to their communities to engage in agriculture. Bitros Kuruti, Trust TV News, Meiduguri. Now, Fora and Nono, a fermented cow milk mixed with millet, is a popular drink in five local government areas that make up Dora Emirate. The meal is commonly consumed in Dora because of the abundance of cow milk in the Emirate. Abdullahi Yamadi completes our report. Dofra and Nunu is available almost everywhere in northern Nigeria, but the nature of its preparation and preservation in Dora makes it unique. These attributes also make Dora's Fra and Nunu stand high in taste and satisfaction. Fra and Nunu is our common drink in Dora and ours is the best in the whole of Nigeria. Our nono is pure and free from adulteration. As such, it tastes better. Our fura is prepared to the standard, and that makes the mixture very sweet and delicious. Here in Dora, we welcome our guests with fura de nono because of its speciality and we send it to our friends and relatives in places like Abuja, Kaduna, Plato, and even Lagos as gifts. Ours is different. We are proud of our fura. Some Dora residents take fura as the only drink to serve as breakfast, lunch, or dinner, while others prefer it after each meal. People from all over Nigeria and the neighboring Niger Republic patronized this nutritious drink, which many believed is as old as ancient houses and flannies who first settled in Dora. But what does this Fura and Nono business mean to these old women and young girls who relentlessly make the meal in Dora? <laughs> To me, the business of Fura the Nunu has helped me greatly. My husband died years ago. We have five children, and this is the only business I know. With it, I have built a house, married out two of my daughters, and I am paying my children's coffee. I am living a comfortable life. Observers say the thriving Fra and Nono business in Dora Emirates and the patronage it is enjoying means everything to residents. This is also one business with millions of people, including all age groups, along its value chain, from the milk processing sellers and the millet sellers to the fra producers, sellers and consumers. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katana. Now from the business of Fura the Nuno, let's move to other business stories. Now, N Nigeria and the International Trade Financing Corporation, the ITFC, have signed a $1 billion framework agreement for the next couple of years. Jai's Bank has also signed a $10 million agreement for the Murabaha Financing Facility. Now, the signing ceremony took place on Saturday at the 4 day 2023 group annual meeting of the Islamic Development Bank ongoing in Saudi Arabia. I'm speaking shortly after the signing of the agreement. Minister of Finance, who led Nigeria's delegation at the meeting, Zainab Ahmed, said the ITFC is one of the high performing subsidiaries of the ISBD with strong presence in Nigeria and supporting businesses largely in the energy sector as well as agriculture and trade. On his part, the chief executive officer of Jai's bank, Suraj Salisu, expressed satisfaction for the feat achieved by the bank. ITFC is one of the high-performing subsidiaries of the Islamic Development Bank. They have a strong pr presence in Nigeria, supporting businesses largely 
the energy sector, but also agriculture and trade. And they've been doing that through partnership with financial institutions uh, operating in Nigeria. Today we signed uh, a framework agreement that uh, charts the road path of our partnership over the next couple of years with ITFC. But also today, ITFC signed uh, an agreement with JE's Bank Nigeria on a Moharaba arrangement for the benefit of one, one of our states. So they continue to work with us to help us to improve uh, the performance of businesses and, and thereby improving to the growth of our economy. Yeah, facility. Yeah. Can you share more light on this? Yeah, you see, uh, this Murabaha financing facility is not only with the with the ITFC where you have uh, the trade finance line, but even the one relating to the ICD, be it uh, 20, 25 million dollars that we have been enjoying. Like I mentioned, is to finance people that will buy locally but they will export and it keeps going. Both ICD and ITFC, like you had today, they are very happy with the performance. We have never defaulted for even a day, and that is why you see we keep renewing. Not only we are renewing, but we are also enhancing the, the total amount. On the foreign scene, the police in Zambia say 24 people were killed on Saturday when a bus carrying churchgoers heading for a religious service rammed into a truck in southern Zambia. The, the crash left 12 others seriously injured, including the driver. The deceased have been identified as 23 female adults and 1 male adult, while those injured are 8 males and 4 females. Deadly traffic accidents are common in Zambia due to a poor state of roads and reckless driving. In sports news, the Federation of International Football Association FIFA on Saturday revealed the, the jersey numbers of Flying Eagle players ahead of the Under-20 World Cup. The Flying Eagles 21 mask for the competition was released earlier this week by the Nigerian Football Federation of the NFF. AC Milan midfielder Victor Eletri will wear the famous number 10 jersey, while one of the new boys in the team, Lawal Salem, has been assigned number 9. Majority of the players who were part of the team at the 2023 Africa Under 20 Cup of Nations in February kept their jersey numbers. The Flying Eagles are drawn in Group D at the World Cup with five time winners Brazil, Italy, and debutant Dominican Republic. The La Dambozo side will begin their campaign against Dominican Republic on Sunday, May 21. And with that story, we have come to the end of news update on Trust Television this hour. For more, do connect with us across all our social media platforms. I am Nten Ekman. Many thanks for watching. Bye-bye.